My next guest stars in the Emmy Award-winning Disney Plus series High School Musical, the musical on which he plays Big Red. Most recently, he portrayed the role of Timmy in the first season of BET's First Wives Club and can also be seen opposite Kiernan Shipka in the film Fangirl. He is formally trained as a dancer and vocalist, and side note, I can vouch for the fact that he's a wonderful tap dancer. He has also starred in several regional musicals, including Oliver, Fiddler on the Roof, and Miracle on 34th Street. It is with great pleasure that I welcome Larry Saperstein to join me today on Stop Time. Larry, welcome. It's so great to see you. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure. So where, where are you spending most of your time these days? Well, right now I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah, uh, where we film our show. And um, we're just in the midst of filming season two, and it's been uh, a wild ride. So, <laughs> Yeah, seriously. How long have you been there? Um, well, so we started shooting the season before the pandemic. So um, I, I mean, obviously, you know, I've lived here on and off for almost two years now, but um, we started shooting this season in February and then we stopped in March and then um, I moved back here in September. So I, I went back home to Long Island and then I moved back here in September uh, and we started back up in like October. So uh, yeah, so we've been kind of going ever since. Oh, wow. That's really interesting. So you were in the midst of, was it season one or season two? You were in uh, the midst season of- two. Season one is already it. Is already yeah. It. Okay. So how, tell me about that. What was that like when you sort of were, had to shut down and go home? I think, um, you know, we shut down relatively early in the grand scheme of things. I think Disney is, you know, very proactive. And so um, they pulled the plug before we really knew what this thing was. It was like still early in March when, when we got our shutdown. Um, and so I think at the time we were just a little confused um, and, and we also really thought that we were only going to be gone for, you know, a month, maybe. We thought that, you know, everyone was just going to stay at home and do their thing and it, it wouldn't get too bad. And little did we know that this would become like the entire year of 2020. But the good thing is that I think we were all going through it together. And by all, I mean, like the entire world, the entire <laughs> like entertainment community, you know, uh, nobody knew that Broadway was going to shut down for over a year. Nobody knew, you know, all of these things. And I, so I think, um, we're just one very small part of a larger, um, a larger, larger global pandemic, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. For sure. And there's something it's kind of, I mean, not to minimize it, but there's something about that idea that we're all in it together, right? Pardon the pun, but yeah. literally that sort of kind of normalizes it at least a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. no, that makes perfect sense. So I'm curious, I'm really curious to know about that, that space like that, that transition, if you don't mind talking about it, like between, you know, when it got shut down and you were kind of, you know, probably in the groove, right, of what you were doing. And then, yeah, got, yeah, go, go yeah, for I it. Mean, I mean, usually, so usually it takes us about like an episode or two to like get back into the groove because, you know, you're shooting and you have to sort of find, find it again and, and, you know, you're in this new environment. And so, uh, you know, this, that happened season one and it happened season two. And so we were really just, we re- really were just starting to get into the swing of things and starting to, mm-hmm. um, you know, fall back into who our characters were and what the storylines were and all those things. And then um, to sort of get shut down and go home was just like a crazy thing. I was very lucky, you know, my, I, my parents live on Long Island and I immediately just um, went to their house. Um, and at the time I also still had an apartment in Brooklyn that I was sort of floating back and forth between. Mm. Um, and, you know, it was, it was just a crazy summer. A lot of people that I know that were living in the city, you know, moved out until a later date. Like, you know, so many people moved and aren't moving back until this is all over. And, um, I sort of did a similar thing. The, the lease was up in July and we sort of packed up and went our separate ways for now. And, um, and so that was a, that was a large, you know, sort of shift in my life. A, a lot of things definitely shifted and for the next couple of years is, is different. You know, I thought, um, I thought we would finish this season in July. You know, if there was no pandemic, we would have wrapped in July. It would be airing now you know Mm -hmm. um and i would be back in new york trying to i don't know do a broadway show do something in between seasons or 
something like that. But um, instead, we're sort of still in it. And, you know, we'll be done soon. You know, we, we still have basically another like month and a half left. But once we're, once we're done, then, uh, then I'll get a nice break. But I probably won't be going back to New York. I'll probably um, go to the West Coast because it's just a little bit um, more easily accessible, especially if I come back here for, for a third season, hopefully. We haven't mm. been there yet, but hopefully. Yeah. And that's knowing you that, you know, I don't know you that well, but knowing that you're very connected to New York, um, yeah. that's, that's a pretty big decision for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, I, I also think um, one of the great things about the pandemic, and I've noticed this with a lot of other people, is like um, it's given people the opportunity to say, there's no other time in my life that I will be able to do this, do this particular thing, you know, like, um, so for, for example, for me, I am always being brought back to New York because I, I'm a theater person and I'm a dance person. And obviously the top world, the top dance world is largely based in New York. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there's a lot of opportunities there for someone that performs on stage, you know, or, or yep. who, who loves performing on stage. Well, in this particular uh, situation, there is no stage and there's no performing on stage right now. Um, and so for me, I've always been a little nervous to give up those opportunities and to go to LA um, to, to try to look for something new. Um, but right now I'm of the mindset of like, when else am I going to be able to try this? And when else am I going to get sort of the kick in the butt that I need to like try that new thing. And so um, for me, I think it's been really a great opportunity to sort of reflect on the situation and think like, okay, well, you know, we're going to be done here in a couple of months and theater will probably not be back for another three or four months after that. So that gives me a great period of time to go and try that try living there for three months however long and see if i like it and if i like it more then i can stay and if i hate it then i'll leave yeah well perspective is everything right yeah you, exactly. you don't really know until you until you go and sort of check it out i love that you were able to sort of pivot and see the opportunity that was presented by by, yeah. by this sort of stasis of you know the the rhythm has changed you know the yeah, rhythm exactly. has literally changed um but and I, yeah, and I think that's I think that's what we're all having to do mm. um, in just our personal lives and in our creative lives. You know, so many people that that work on stage or that you know teach dance classes or you know they they make their living off of being in social situations have had to figure out how to um, how to adapt. And I think that is like the the sort of mantra of of this time is that is that like adapting and shifting perspective. Yeah. Oh, 100%. I'm curious to know what your biggest challenges have been so far. Is there anything that, that you've really faced that you've... Yeah. I, I don't know if I ever approached it as like a, a challenging time, which is, which is hard. Um, but I also, um, I sort of have been able to recognize some of my own privileges and some of my own things that I've been very lucky to have. You know, like I had a home to go to. I had a place that had an extra bedroom for me. I had mm. like a, a mom that could cook me food, you know, for, for six months or however long. <laughs> um, and I was really able to, to sort of work on other things that I never really worked on before. Like, for example, I couldn't, I couldn't really tap dance, which was, which was a hard thing. Cause I, you know, I love going to the studio and, and dancing and yeah. taking class. And I, and then especially after coming here in September, I don't have any, you know, floors here and I am also in an apartment. So I really haven't been able to, to dance nearly as much here in Salt Lake. So I've had to sort of uh, put that on the, on the back burner for a little bit, but I learned how to play the piano. So mm. that was sort of my, my uh, substitution for creativity and, um, you know, uh, working in, in music and, and dance. And, and one day I'll, I'll be so happy to, to get back into the studio. I'm sure I'll need a little bit of, um, brushing up. I'm sure my <laughs> skills won't be as, as great as they were, you know, last March, but, um, but yeah, I think it's just a, it, it was just about like trying to find those substitutions, finding other things that were, that were able to fill, um, that void. Yeah. And, and it's interesting um, because certainly I'm sure working on a series like that, as you said, you're pretty busy too, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And I go, and you know, the craziest thing is it is a musical show, right? Like I do get to tap dance in the show. I do get to sing in the show. And I'm so lucky that my show is a musical show because yeah. that is what I'm good at. And that is what I love to do. But it's also a TV show. And like, you know, the nature of television and film is that you're not doing the same thing every day. So if I was on Broadway, you know, there'd be the scene and then there'd be the dance and I would get to do both of those every day. But in, in television world, like I only dance, you know, or sing on my show once a month, maybe. Mm -hmm. Right. And then like every other day I'm just doing scenes, which is like, wonderful and I love acting as well you know acting is probably right up there I, I love being an actor um, but in terms of practice and in terms of um, you know being a good musician and being a, a good dancer um, you know some days I, I walk on set and I don't say a word or I don't have any lines but I'm there for eight nine hours you know yes. just sort of giving reactions because I'm in the scene but the scene's not about me or, or whatever it is and that's part of the job but you know I would love to be dancing every day but that's just not the nature of the job and I, I you know so so that has been an adjustment really you know over the last two years so I wouldn't say that that's a real like um, pandemic thing no. that has just been a life adjustment because previously before I before I went and did this show I was going to, to dance class once or twice a week and then doing school, you know, and so I had tap dance was like such a fixture in my life. And then coming here, it's less about tap dance and more about, you know, being an actor. Yep. No, that makes sense. And, and yeah. as you pointed out, I mean, consistency is, is not there. I mean, it's, it's probably yeah. even harder. So then when you are asked to dance on the show, you're probably recording it all day long, doing it a million times and then not again, right? So it's like- Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Like we, we have a, you know, we, we shoot a dance number. It's like, well, today is the day of the dance number and you're going to do it a hundred times. Yeah. And you just make sure that you get it right as many times as you can. And if you mess up, that's okay too. But, you know. Yep. That's but then, be but tough. then never again. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's definitely a very special skill. Amazing. Yeah. No, I hear you. That's, that's really cool. I, what I was going to say is the fact that you're able to, um, to make that pivot, like to playing the piano, as, as you said, and that kind of thing. Was there a moment before then where you felt like, I don't want to say victimized, but in the energy work that I do, we call, you know, we, we talk about a victim level of energy where we feel like stuff is happening to us. And a lot mm -hmm. of us um, felt like that during the pandemic, right? I mean, naturally we would because yeah. we couldn't control it. So I'm just curious to know before you made the pivot, I'm curious about that space, like where you were like, you know, before you got the, enough energy to sort of have, be clear headed enough to go, wait, there are other things I can do. Yeah. Um, well, I was actually in a very interesting position because I still had um, uh, schoolwork to do. I was doing school remotely, actually, pre-pandemic anyway. <laughs> yeah. um, and so then when everything went remote, I was like, okay, well, I, I, st I still have to do this work. So um, there was like papers that I was writing and things that I was doing. And, and I was actually um, in the early stages feeling grateful that that I had the time to do those things and, and put in um, mm. the energy that I needed to, to put into them. Yep. Um, so I graduated college in May and my thesis was to write a short film essentially. And so what I was really lucky with was that like, it was initially going to be a short film. And then because I had extra time, I turned it into a feature length film, you know, so oh, I was wow. able to fully, to fully expand and to fully flesh out that idea. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, so I, I think I was always really approaching it from like, I have to try to, to do these things. I think that from the moment that I arrived home, I had like this laundry list of things that I wanted to try to do. And I don't know if I did all of them, but I definitely did some of them. <laughs> I, yeah. think, I think it's actually very interesting. I almost feel more, um, more that way, more in that victim state as things started to go on longer because I almost felt like I was running out of steam. And then it was like, well, I, you know, I wanted to write a song and I did that. Okay. Well, I wanted to learn how to play piano and I'm doing that, but that's a long journey. You know, like learning how to play piano takes years. And so I've been playing for eight months. Okay. That's great. But, but now I'm like plateauing because I can't take lessons. So it was the running out of steam for me. And then just 
trying to remind myself that just because I'm going through like a two month period where I don't have any ideas doesn't mean that I'm not creative. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's, yeah. I mean, that's very insightful um, of you to, to recognize that. So yay. Um, <laughs> no, no. I mean, it's super, super cool because it sounds like being busy is very important to you. Like, and I don't mean busy for busy yeah. sake, but, but being productive. No. I, I love, I love working. I love, 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 you know, we're here. I live in Salt Lake city, Utah to work. So for me, I'm like, I want to be doing something for this production every single day that I'm here. And if I have to, you know, if I have to go to set at 7am and leave at 8pm and I mean, I, I think that that gives me a purpose, right? So like getting up and going going to do my, my thing, my skills every day is, is really important to me. And that's, and I think that comes from like my New York sensibility. Like I think, you know, it's the grind and I, and I Mm. love that. And that's like part of who I am. So yeah. So it was trying to figure out how to do that without leaving my house basically. Yeah. Mm, I understand why you do it. And I'm hearing that you get a lot out of it because, yeah. but tell me more about why it's important for you to to be in the grind, to be all in. Yeah. yeah. I think it's not necessarily a conscious thing. I think it's more just like that is the energy that I have surrounded myself with for most of my life. And I think it's very much like a New York thing. And the people that I've been around and, you know, the people that are good at what they do, they they work really damn hard. And they, you know, they work every single day. And so I will always find myself getting down on myself if it's like been a week and I didn't do, you know, any of the things that I think are are important. Like, you know, pre-pandemic, if I didn't go to class for two weeks because I had a show in school that I was working on, or if I had a production or, you know, whatever, homework even, like sometimes I couldn't go to class because I had a big project that was due on Thursday. So I couldn't go to class on Wednesday night, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I would just always find myself getting angry with myself because I think like I've always learned that like if you want to be good at something you have to you have to do it all the time Mm. um and so I I never want to let my skills um fall and that's really tricky when I have a lot of skills I'm an actor I'm a tap dancer I try to be a vocalist I try to be you know a musician I try to be an artist I try to write so there's all these different things I'm always sort of indexing trying to think like okay well what is the thing that I haven't done in a while now? And so now I need to brush up that thing. Like maybe I need to write, you know, for this week because I haven't written anything in a couple of months. And so like my sort of journey over the last maybe four or five years since I've been like an adult in quotes, mm-hmm. an adult <laughs> is like, what are the things that really, really make me, you know, passionate and how do I hone in on those things and also forgiving myself for letting the other things slip Mm. because I I can never be good at everything at one time. So I've been trying to, to, to allow myself to say like, okay, well this year of my life or this month or this six months, I am a tap dancer or I am a musician or I, you know, and it's okay that the other things will fall because at a certain point I will, I will be good at them again. And I think the other thing too is like, I've actually been going through this um, mental journey um, uh, over the last, this is a very recent um, sort of thought process is like, I recognize that I am not the best tap dancer in the world, right? And I will never be the best tap dancer in the world. However, I have to be able to give myself credit for what I am doing, which is like tap dancing on a TV show that is, you know, massively accessible to mm. the general public and inspiring people that have never tap danced before or maybe never seen a boy tap dance or you know, think dancing is for girls or whatever, like mm. inspiring those people. And so I'm, I'm starting to give myself credit for like, what is this actually about and what am I actually trying to do? And it's not about being the best. It's about doing it graciously and doing it wholeheartedly and helping it live on. And so that's what I've been trying to hone in on. Mm, amen. Yeah. No, no, that's, that's really beautifully articulated. You know, I also think we're also our own worst critics all the time. It's like, when I actually sit back and think about the people that I've tap danced with and, this, and the circles that I've been in and the community that I'm in, I am, I am at that level. 
but in that circle, I'm not the best and that's okay. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like I have to, I have to realize like, I, I actually have done the work. And like, when I look at the, when I look at the full spectrum, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not at the bottom, you know, I, I am a tap dancer, right? Like I am, I am a professional tap dancer and I have to be proud of that accomplishment. But then it's so hard when you're in, you know, when you're in the circle that you're in to, to not look at the other people in that circle and say, oh, well, this person, um, you know, this person has much better timing than me. And this person is, you know, is always, um, is always has cleaner sounds than me or, or this person's a better, you know, improviser than me. And, and, and I do that. And I think we all do that with everything, right? Like, you know, when I think about acting and I think about like the people that are in my show, it's, it's not about being the best in that circle all the time. Sometimes it's just about allowing yourself um, to be proud of yourself for being in that circle. It sounds like there have been a lot of what, what I would say limiting beliefs around maybe what's successful in any realm looks yeah. like, right? Yeah. And then an awareness because you, because you are multifaceted, you've seen the best, if, if yeah. you can say there's a best anywhere, but you've seen, you've seen very high level people in all the areas that you're interested in your life and that you also practice. It's interesting because you said like indexing um, yourself, like yeah. you, it sounds like you apply that same same kind of categorization of yourself that you do to other people. You put them in, you index them in the best. That's maybe just the way your brain works, in order yeah. to to understand right where where you are and stuff. And that, and that's interesting. And you know, there there's probably a lot of opportunity in there. And it sounds like you're already embarking on that journey with this yeah. idea idea of permission yeah. not be the best, but to throw maybe to throw away the the idea eventually that there even is a best and that if, mm. if the journey is just the journey and you do your very best at any given moment, which is what you right. described, P.S., when you said, I'm here and I'm here to work and I'm not going to bitch about getting up at seven and working for 12 hours because I'm here right. I'm all in. You're very all in. Yeah, I think that that is just what I personally need um, for my mental health. Yeah. You know, like, like I, everybody is different, but I think that is my train of thought and my inner monologue um, that gets me to a place where I can allow myself to relax and say like, I'm doing the thing, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do it to the best of my ability. And if today I only played piano for 15 minutes, that's okay. It's better than if I didn't do it at all, you know? Yeah. Allowing yourself to just, just play the piano a little bit rather than not playing at all because you couldn't give, all, give it at all is yeah. huge for you. Um, yeah. 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 I mean, I think that like, I always want to be seeing progress with yep. myself and I yep. always, I, you know, I think I have a tendency to compare myself yep. um, to other people and I think we all do. Um, and so what, what has been my journey for, you know, definitely this year, but, but probably, probably before this year too, but definitely as this year was progressing was like, um, you, you know, figuring out that like, I'm surrounded with amazing people and I'm really grateful for that. And I can learn something from each of them, mm. but I don't have to be as good at them all the time. So it's allowing myself to recognize that, um, you know, we all have something different to bring to the table and that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. What is your definition of living in the moment? I don't know if I always do. I, I think that's a, it's a hard one for me because I think that is like maybe the whole point of happiness and like being able to be comfortable with what you have and where you are. So maybe that's my definition, you know, being, mm. being able to be comfortable with what you have and where you are and not to be striving for, for things that are down the line. Mm. Um, but I think that's a really hard thing, especially in this industry, um, because you're always searching for the next thing, right? Like you're always on the grind to be like, okay, well this, you know, this Broadway show is closing in three months and like, I need to work after that. Um, so I think like that is maybe like the eternal struggle of show business, right? And, and I think that is maybe a large reason why so many people struggle, you know, with, with their happiness and, um, and comfort. But then, you know, but then there's, there's a lot of people that are able to feel grateful for what they have in the moment. And, um, and I admire those people a mm -hmm. lot. <laughs> yeah. Have you, can you think of a time when, when you've kind of been in that zone? I think maybe, maybe during this year, I was able to sort of relax and, and feel grateful for the things that I had because I, I was able to recognize that I was really fortunate. Other people, you know, 
lost their jobs and I was able to come back and still be working. And so I'm very, very fortunate. And so I think this, if, if there was ever a year to sort of take a little bit of inventory and, and see how things are going and check in, um, I think this was the year. And I think that um, that's how I've been feeling. Mm. What do you know will be true about you no matter what happens? Hmm. Well, I know that I'm a, a very loyal person. I, I try mm. to keep friendships in my life you know, as long as possible. I think that's been something that as I'm getting older, I've been able to really look back on and say, wow, like this person has been in my life for 14 years and I'm 22, you know? So that's a huge deal. And so I think my goals for myself is to always stay grounded no matter, um, no matter how famous I get, no matter how much I work or don't work, because that's what's going to keep me able to, to keep floating along. I think. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. What, what does grounded look like for you? Um, well, to me, I think it's very important to have friends that are not in the industry. Like it's mm. important to have people that are never going to be, you know, famous, right? Like one of my, one of my, you know, greatest, closest friends um, is a psychology major, right? And she's like going to go be a therapist and that's what she wants to do. And so I think for me, it's about making sure that I have other people in my life that that see things from a different perspective. Mm. Uh, cause, Cause I think that will is, but then it's also about making sure that I have people in my life that see things from my perspective, because sometimes I need that. Uh, yep. So it's about, it's about the balance. Yep. No, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. So if your life was like an open stage and you were the writer, director, and the principal player, what story would you create for yourself? Oh, I don't know. I, um, well, there would definitely be dancing involved. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sure it'd be some kind of tap show. I don't know. I think, I think um, my, my sort of journey has been a story of finding myself and like finding my own comfort and happiness. And I think that would be maybe the, maybe the primary plot is like some sort of just a, just like an emotional, a self emotional journey, I think is, mm. is, um, is where mm. I'm at right now. I love that. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I tend to see the world in stories, like regardless mm -hmm. of whether or not they're on a stage. Mm -hmm. And so like in my mind, like this is a chapter of my story. This year is a chapter of gl the global story. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I tend to see the world in those chapters and those moments. Yeah, no, that, that <laughs> makes sense. No, that makes, really, that makes really good sense. What would you say is your strongest attribute? I don't know. Um, <laughs> may, maybe, my, maybe my strongest attribute is, is my sort of uh, dedication and like professionalism. I, I take what I do really seriously and I try to, uh, to always do my best. And if I'm, if I ever have a day where I, um, didn't feel like I did my best, I, I get down on myself, which is maybe not the best, but it's a reminder that I, that I really do care about what I do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that really resonates, I'm sure, in your work and the people you work with, as well as the people yeah. that you just live with and, and, and love in your life. Yeah. No, that's yeah. Super, super beautiful. Where do you see yourself in five years? Well, hopefully uh, in five years, I, you know, we, we rode this show out for as long as we could have possibly done it, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and hopefully I've done something else that has allowed me to continue uh, in the business. I, I, I want to make sure that after this show, I, I still work and still do um, as much as possible. Maybe, maybe I'll have done a Broadway show. Maybe I'll have, you know, produced a film that I wrote or something, but yeah, that's kind of uh that's kind of the, the journey. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. What about like further down the line? Like what about 10 years when you're like all of 32 years old? Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I would love to, maybe this is more for further than 10 years. Cause sure. I know that, um, this is a sort of life journey. I, I would love to, to be a showrunner on a television oh. show. Uh, that's like a, that's a great goal. Um, that's a lot of responsibility and that's like a full-time job. And I would love to sort of explore that, that journey a little bit more. That's very cool. What about 50 years from now? What do you want to have accomplished? Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, <laughs> I hope that I have a, a giant family um, mm. and I hope that I'm respected for the things that I've done in my life. Yeah. I just want to know that I, I made a difference. Like, I want to know that through my work and through the things that I did, I like made a difference to people and like the industry and made something better. Yeah. 
That's beautiful. But is there yeah. anything else, like any other career that's not arts related? Is there anything else that you'd love to do if if you could lead a million lives? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so I, I've always, you know, wanted to, you know, be a teacher or like there was a there was a brief period of time when I was like, I could do, you know, I could learn how to do computer programming or I, I think I, one of my passions was like feeling smart. That's a weird weird way to put it but like I, I really just loved like learning new things and and gaining a new understanding of things so something that would allow me to do that I think you know mm. would would fulfill me in in a similar way you know yeah so I'm just gonna say what makes you and you're just gonna say what comes to your mind so for okay. instance I'm gonna say what makes you hungry uh, a long day of work <laughs> <laughs> What makes you laugh? I don't know if you ever played Jackbox games. No. Um, they're like these games that you play with friends and you like play them on your phone. Um, and that you, it's, it's a lot of people coming up with like random answers for like silly prompts. Um, and those recently have been making me laugh a lot when I played them with my friends. What makes you cry? Um, maybe loneliness. Yeah. What makes you feel inspired? Honestly, the, the people I'm surrounded by, you know, like I'm surrounded by so many incredible, inspiring people and, and they really help me uh, move forward. What frustrates you? Maybe feeling like I am not doing enough. What motivates you? The desire to like be better at what I'm doing. What makes you mad? Dishonesty or, or um, sort of like a breaking of trust. And what makes you grateful? My, I'll just say my job. My, I, love, I love my job. And I, I'm constantly reminded that I'm lucky to be here. And that's like a really wonderful thing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to ask you, what are the top three things that happened so far today? Uh, well, I didn't do much today. Um, we had a, a little cast Zoom check-in just because we do one every week just to make sure that we're all doing okay. Just because when we're on set, we don't really get to... Um, you know, interact as much. So uh, a Zoom call is like a nice way to just check in for like a half an hour and talk about nothing, uh, talk about whatever we want. So that, so I did that today. And, um, uh, you know, I felt good when I woke up this morning and I had uh, some oranges. And so I feel, uh, feel good. So yeah, you got your health. (laughs) Yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do for the rest of the day, but um, I guess we're only going up. What are you most looking forward to? Honestly, right now, because we're in the thick of it, I'm looking forward for like this season of my show to be released. I I think people have been waiting for it for a long time and it's been a hard year and it'll just be like a really nice marker for the things that we were able to accomplish um, during this crazy time. Yeah, no, absolutely. That guy's been working really hard to get this done. It's going to feel amazing. Yeah. Yeah, no, that'll be a joy. That'll be a joy. Listen, I'm so, I'm so grateful for you and for taking the time to be in the moment with me today, Larry. Really. Thank you thank for you. having me. <laughs> oh, it's been my absolute pleasure. I've been speaking today with Larry Saperstein. Thanks for listening. Stay safe and healthy, everyone. And remember to live in the moment. <laughs>